I published, uh, say, one or two days ago, a circuit from an oscillator that could work on 1.5 volts. And I got a very interesting comment of one of my followers. Uh, uh, and uh, he told about the so-called Peltz oscillator. Well, of course, I directly went to the World Wide Web and studied it. Uh, nothing wrong about that Peltz oscillator. Uh, you can surely make it, but say I was more or less triggered to the minimum voltage. Uh, that is usable when you want to make a, a stable multivibrator and then especially with silicon transistors. Uh, of course the barrier voltage of silicon transistors differs substantially from germanium transistors. That means that perhaps you can even get to lower supply voltages. Uh, when you use germanium NPN transistors in this circuit. So this is the question, what is the lowest voltage to make a, a stable MUFIP work and then especially with silicon transistors. Here is the schematic that I've used. Completely classical by the way with two uh, NPN silicon transistors, the BC547B, that can amplify between 250 and 300. That's the current amplification anyway. And I've made it by purpose with two um, capacitors of 100 nanofarad because I know that that always will work. Uh, when you change the values of these capacitors, you can get to lower frequencies when the value is higher. Uh, and then I mean, say, 470 nanofarad or so. But when the, the, the capacitor value gets smaller, say 10 nanofarad, the frequency will go up. And this is a kind of way here in the schematic, the one mega ohm potentiometer here, uh, to get to other frequencies. In fact, all is very simple when you study the standard uh, radio electronics theory about multivibrator circuits. Tube multivibrators or transistor multivibrators, etc. etc. Anyway, the, the, the question is, of course, what is the lowest voltage to make it work? Well, let's try. At the moment, I am, I am on 0 0.7 volts. And I can change it here a little bit with that knob, set the output voltage. Uh, that means that on this a voltage we have a waveform and that's in fact very interesting and very good so it works as an oscillator I'm now going to change the supply voltage from 0 0.7 volts to 1 volt let's try here Small changes, by the way, here, one volt. So here it is one volt. But of course, we know that that uh, potentiometer here also plays a role. This one, this potentiometer of one mega ohm also plays a role. So I change now the value of that one mega ohm potentiometer. Let's see what happens. Of course, the, the frequency will change substantially. So, and it 
surely works. Here it is, that change frequency and also my scope wants to trigger, that's a very good thing. So here we have a frequency, I don't know the exact frequency but anyway, uh, when, you, when you make this circuit and test it, you will surely get these results. And now we are on 1.3 volts. Let's go to a smaller voltage. 1.2, 0 0.5. Well, that's quite good. Now it stops. Well, now we have 0 0.5 again. Lift up the voltage somewhat to 0 0.7 and here the whole circuit starts to work. So anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for that command, uh, co comment uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, it has given me, say, this experiment. So, uh, do we need a pelts oscillator? Well, I don't know. Perhaps it can work on smaller uh, supply voltages. Uh, well, that's more or less all to think about. And uh, I'm more or less sure that when you make, when you use here germanium transistors, uh, the supply voltage where it all will oscillate uh, will be somewhat smaller compared to the situation now. Thanks for watching. Turn that potentiometer somewhat on that higher voltage that is 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 volts and of course this works very very nice perhaps I can connect my uh, Signal tracer to it could be interesting, uh, especially about the sound that we hear out of this simple two transistor oscillator. Perhaps it will give out the sound. I don't know that exactly, but anyway, let's try. Well, it works. That's quite good. So. This is the frequency sent out by this circuit and when I turn here that potentiometer, let's see what happens. So we are in the 900-500 hertz range. And let me show the differences when we lift up the supply voltage. That's always, always very interesting uh, when we lift up the supply voltage here. Suddenly it's, it starts to oscillate. Frequency is quite high. That's logical when we look at the radio theory. And then we have here, the frequency drops down somewhat and goes up somewhat. So anyway, again, thanks for watching. This was more or less all to tell about this ID. 
and the idea was what is the lowest voltage to make a, a stable multivibrator work. Well, it works between say 0 0.7 volts and say x volts in case of these silicon transistors.